Welcome to Photo Talk, where we're going to talk about education and a whole lot more. Uh, we have Alexander here. He's from Brazil, and I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. Why don't you say hi? Good evening, everyone. If you notice my accent, just please don't care. <laughs> I'll say a lot of things wrong, but the point here, we are here to try to uh, uh, share a bit of the information we have, we know, and try to make your journey to, through photography a bit better. Uh, what is the topic for today, Rom? Uh, today we're going to be talking about lighting and how to set up certain lights to get certain results. Most so of today, the portraits? Today we're going to be talking about basically your four main light patterns that you're going to be looking for. Um, we're going to go into a little detail, show you some images, and at the same time, we're going to show you how to set it up. Yeah. Uh, as I'm live on Instagram, too, I just want to remember people, uh, if you want to join the show, we are live on YouTube. You just need to get the link on my bio. It's the second link on my link tree. Uh, so let's start. All right. Let's do it. Uh, so I will bring the first picture. We're going to talk a bit about it, and then we show the diagrams. So I think it's this button. Yes. Look what a handsome man in the picture. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the light. This is a, a very dramatic light. Is known as a split light. Rom? Mm -hmm. Yep, and with the split light, if you notice, the light is exactly 90 degrees, and you're using a semi-hard light. Um, it would be a smaller... Uh, light source so you can get a very fast fall off um, so let's let's switch over that diagram and let's show them yeah, a little bit just let me put some things over it uh, yep. I turned the pictures into black and white so we can see better the light so don't get mm -hmm. disturbed about the colors and I overexposed it a bit uh, the light was uh, this picture was took uh, stuck in this room the light was right here right to this side so I will come to the diagram uh i think it's this one okay all right so to achieve this split lighting okay if you notice this light here is exactly 90 degrees from our model in this one we have a backlight which is then giving her this nice little rim on the edge it just breaks them apart so you can get a little bit of a separation but this is your result you can clearly see that that split is there. Okay. Notice it's not extremely high because if we go up and I'll show you. you One important thing there is that uh, you are using a ring light too. So I didn't use it. Uh, I just put the, the main light and uh, one thing that uh, is very confusing for beginners is that they look the place where the light is going. So they look the, the lit part of the face. And when we are trying to do these light patterns, we are usually looking for the shadowy part of the face of the, the su subject. So sorry, I interrupt you. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. And you want to pay attention to those shadows. Oh, sorry, wrong button. And that is how you do split lighting. So what's our next one? So what do you got for us? Aha, Rembrandt. So with Rembrandt lighting, as you can see on here, he is... I'm talking with the <laughs> microphone on mute. <laughs> hey, first show, what do you expect? Yeah. Uh, just to remember people, if you have any doubts about any of the, the light patterns we're showing, just drop a comment. Uh, we're going to try to answer everything that comes up and try to, to make it easier. So this is Hembran, is one of the, the most, most used uh, lighted, light, lighting patterns for portraits. Uh, I use only one light again. You could, of course, use a reflector to kind of soft a bit the shadows. But let's go to the diagram. And this one is a tricky one. You have the diagram already? 
Rome? Yep, go for it. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. All right. So with Rembrandt, it's like a window, okay? So when you're looking at Rembrandt lighting, okay, you are going to actually move it slightly forward on the person to where they're about halfway on the uh, softbox or lighting source or window or whatever you're trying to use. And with that, you'll notice the wraparound comes around and will hit just below their eye, creating this little triangle of light. Yeah, one thing that we didn't talk yet, uh, and I think is very important, is that, okay, you're going to look to the lit part of the subject, you're going to look to the shadow part of the subject, but mm -hmm. you have to pay special attention to the catch light, because it needs to be in a certain place, isn't it? Say that again? Uh, the catch light, it needs to be in a certain place of the face, the, of the eyes. So yeah. That, that's what we were talking about with this triangle. You can see the triangle here. In this little diagram, it's kind of hard to see it, but there's a little bit of a catch light right here. But in reality, it would look like the image over here. So bringing it up just a little bit more, you can see you can enhance that and make that triangle thicker. And another thing that I think is important is that when you bring the light close, you get more wraparound, but you get darker shadows too. Correct. And that's square law. Yeah. So with square law, anything that's super close is going to have a faster fall off. And the reason why is because if you see here, you have to increase your speed or, you, you know, your change your f-stop or your ISO. But in order to um, achieve the proper exposure, you're going to have to drop it however many stops that you have to get to get proper lighting, which then creates the drop off on the shadows a lot darker. Usually when you push the light, uh, the double of the distance back, you're going to lose like uh, uh, three quarters of the light you had. So you have well, to it's compensate like, an exposure. It's doubling. So every, if you go a foot, then you go, two feet, then you go four feet, you're going to increase that every single time. Yeah. So, and that's how you, you get rid of what happened. Can you show us what happened sure. when you uh, uh, get the light too high? Uh, they're too high. So yeah. if you're in here and you try to go up and come down, you're going to notice a lot of shadowing in the eyes. They're almost black. The nose shadow is going to end up over the mouth. Over the mouth, in most cases. In this case, it's it's a software, so you really can't ding it. But you can see the higher it goes, the darker and dramatic those shadows are going to get exactly. underneath so those eyes. There is a position. It's usually forty-five degrees uh, uh, from the subject and forty-five degrees down. In a way, you can still see the, the catch light in the eye. Uh, and the catch light mm -hmm. is supposed to be or at t in between 10 and 11, p 11 p.m. Uh, and 10 and 11 uh, o'clock and 1 to 2. Is that right? Correct. So it doesn't get right up in the eye and it doesn't get to the side. It needs to be in between them. And what he means by catch light is, is these little lights in the eyes right here. You can see the light actual source coming in and reflecting. Yeah. And then on top of that, uh, you also can visualize easier if you're hitting the 45 degree by looking at the eye like a clock. So you could say top of the eye is 12, bottom of the eye is 6, and then just use it as a clock so you know if you have the height of your light proper. Oh, we have some comments here. We have the people from Photo Squad here. We have Sandro Camara. Hi, Sandro. Oh. Okay, I speak Portuguese because this people is Brazilian. Fala, Sandro. Tudo bom, cara? Fala, Renatão, cara. Obrigado pela presença, viu? We have the... the my co-host is in the Brazilian show. That, that's <laughs> almost the same. Uh, <laughs> 
so another thing that to talk we never know who is watching so i think we can come back from the uh, uh from square one so one of the things you can do with the catch light is kind of identify what kind of light were used in the picture and what kind of modifier were was used in the picture so you can see the reflection in the eye you can look and see exactly the modifier on that i don't think i can do it here let me see uh let me come back one picture here i was already ready to the next one sure uh, just give me one second so i wet it here again and i will zoom in the eye so yeah it's a gray beard you can see <laughs> my light is, was a bit too down but you can see here that i'm using an octabox yeah. of course you don't know the diameter but uh uh you can see exactly the reflection of that octabox here so it's something you can use to to read the lighting of another photographer right uh okay so our next light is loop as loop let's see uh, my loop lighting is kind of holding the phone to the camera <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Hey, I just shooting yourself is not that easy. Okay. Yeah, it's not easy, and I did this in ten minutes after work. So right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we All have right. here another friend from Brazil. Oh, two friends from Brazil. We have Osmar Pires. Hey, look, Pam's here. Yeah, Pam is here, and we have Thanks, my Pam. friend from my WhatsApp group. Hey there, Eliezer. And hi, Pam. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I took these pictures like in 10 minutes uh, uh, before the other live. And I was just with the phone in my hand and was the only one from Loop Light that looks good. Mm -hmm. So, oh, there are some things that we didn't talk. I, I want to come back to the, the hand burn light. So I don't remember if we talk what, make, what makes this uh, hand burn lighting. Uh, did we? I don't think we did. Uh, yeah, you talk about the... it's all about the triangle under right. the eye. Did we talk about it? We sure did. We got it. Oh, so I'm getting crazy. <laughs> so let's come back to the loop light. Mm. Don't worry, it's my first show, and I'm kind of nervous. Right. Uh, so loop light. Loop light is a bit different. Uh, different from uh, uh, Hembron lighting. You're gonna still see some kind of triangle under the eye. But you're going to see that the nose shadow doesn't connect to the cheek shadow. So I will zoom in a bit here. When you talk about loop light, this shadow, you not connect with this shadow. It gets a bit confusing from far because I have a beard and I, I have a mustache. So when you look from far, it looks like it's connecting. It's just made in a triangle, but it's not. Uh, this is another very used, uh, used light from for portraits and i think we can go to the diagram already sure okay we are going kind of fast uh, <laughs> so with with this diagram this is oh, actually yeah. one of the most preferred for portraiture work okay this is the one that people like to buy um you guys when you look at this lighting this lighting is usually 45 to 50 degrees. Look who got here. Hey, it's Phil. <laughs> hey, Phil. All right. And uh, if you notice here, the light is completely in front of the person. Okay. It's no longer halfway. And now you're coming down. If I show you where, the, where this little red area is here, there. It's not actually pointing at them it's in front of them okay that is very very important it's called feathering of light Yeah, you're feathering the light to get a bit less contrast and more spread of the light in the face you're trying to wrap the face with light that's basically all you're doing here and then when you what you're doing is is when you set it up you always want to set it up about 45 degrees to where the person is facing so in this case this is where she is facing right here so 45 from that would be where the light is. What that does is it produces the loop light. 
which this is what they call the loop light here. You see that shadow, it loops down below the nose, okay? Notice that the cache lights are still at the 10 and 2, okay? If it was on the other side, it'd be on this side here, but it's on the right side for this one. So your cache lights are here. This light is probably the best light that you could use for any portraiture work for seniors, for um, basically anything. Um, this light is the most flattering. It is a flattering light for for a woman too, uh, uh, because you you get most of the face uh, uh, lit. Mm -hmm. So if you use a soft light, you're gonna get a very flattering light, and just uh, 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 the side of the face uh, in shadow, and you can just soften it, soften it uh, with. Uh, <sighs> Forgot the name. Can you help me? <laughs> with another light. The broad, or with, uh, the broad light or what we're looking at here, this is short lighting. Okay. Short lighting is when you see the short side of the face is actually the lit side. Okay. If I brought this light to the other side and rotated it, all right, this is now called broad lighting. Now, you don't want to do this with females because then you make them look a little bit bigger. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> okay. Um, but that's one. There are some that can pull us off. But in most cases, you do not want to broad light a female. Okay. In most cases, you want to short light the female. So this is, this is not a rule, what I will say now, but I think it's important to mention. Uh Hamburn lighting is really cool for guys because it gives some kind of drama to it. <coughs> of course, you can use on girls. But this loop lighting and our next setup is really, 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 really flattering for girls, especially if you use the, the short lighting. Correct. Uh, oh, I didn't know. Pen, uh, uh, Pen is from Uruguay. Hola, que tal? Oh, que tal? <laughs> that's... that's all my Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. <coughs> All right. So that right. that's basically it. And again, I like to use two lights minimum. Okay. One thing that's very important is always have a separation light opposite of your main light. Okay. What that does is it, it adds this nice separation to the hair. It adds separation to the shoulder area. And it allows it to come away from that darker background yeah and there are two ways to use the separation i know we like uh darker pictures we like low key but you can just you can point the the separation to the subject or you can just point to the background yep uh, one thing one thing that i like to use especially like uh this. yeah like that uh, I don't know if everybody noticed, if everybody knows this software, Satellite. So you have the set in the left side, and you have a preview on the top right corner. Uh, as soon as uh, Rome changed the lighting, you can see in the preview the results. It's a really cool software. Uh, one thing that I like to do is I light the background in the opposite, opposite side where I'm lighting my subject. So I create mm -hmm. a lit side in the subject and the opposite side is lit in the background. So I get a, a fade from both sides is one of the things I like to do. Yep, 100%. Uh, and before we go f to the next setup, uh, I wanna say something. Uh, in fact, I, wanna, I want you to say something. I want sure. you to say what will happen in the next show. Oh, uh, guys, that's great. That's big. in the next show, I'm telling you, this is our first show and we've already got a lot of momentum moving forward from this show. Um, we have an interview with one of the top guys that I have ever met in my life. Uh, Vinny Ragone. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. Go to iCandy.com. This guy rocks when it comes to photographing swimsuit. His photographing. Work is really amazing. I didn't know him. You show me him. He's amazing. He's phenomenal. And we're going to be doing a live interview with him. You're going to get to hear him, talk to him. If you have any questions, um, just 
you'll be able to chat on here. We'll be able to ask him those questions. 100%. This guy has a lot of information that can help you out and help everybody out in the photographic community. All right. So let's go on. And that's one thing. This show will not not always be about uh, education. There will be uh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of interviews to because you can, you can learn a lot from other people here. You can learn a lot how, yep. about how they start and try to identify things you are doing wrong by this time. So uh, uh, we will always have guests and we already have a schedule for the next three weeks with guests. We are just giving the first yeah. one. <laughs> They're feeling quick. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's great because we really want to get part of the community. We want to be part of that photographic community. We want to make sure everybody has that opportunity to be seen. And knowing that we're appreciative of what they do and admire what they do. And for them to be on here and listen to what we have to say and then answer questions that we have, it's just, it, it seems like it ties it together. So and I appreciate it. Talking about the community, uh, we have another message here. If you want your pictures to show up in the uh, uh, in the live, just post it uh, ah. in Instagram with the hashtag photo talk show. Sure. Then we're going to bring it and talk over it. Yeah, and we'll, we'll take a look at it, see how maybe we can help you. You know, we have a lot of beginners that are out there, and that's one of the things that we believe is passing the torch. Um, we're about helping everyone. Um, there is a Facebook group that I'm part of, and he's also part of. Um, I do a lot of educational in that group also to help a lot of beginners. And it's great. It's great to see people, you know, get better and better. And, you know, hopefully the classes we put here actually do some of some of that passing of the torch. Yeah. One thing that we say a lot in the Brazilian show and Rome has the same feeling about it is that collaboration is the key to success is the key to learning yeah. new things so we don't believe on hiding uh, uh, holding information uh, or hiding things we just want to put everything out and we want everybody to share the same love and the same knowledge about photography 100 percent uh so let's go so our to next our one. next one uh i'm already on it i guess yes i am so let me put it here and here it is i just love to see myself in the screen you know <laughs> <laughs> i promise you next time i will bring a model okay <laughs> that's all right so we are talking about uh a light pattern that came with paramount pictures it's kind of a bit old and uh, it's called or paramount lighting or butterfly lighting. And there is a variation of it that is called clamshell lighting. This is the setup for uh, beauty pictures. Everybody use it. Uh, you have the diagram already, Rome? Yep, go for it. Okay, so let's do it here. All right. So beauty lighting is what you see in magazines is what you see uh, with prom dresses and up close and personal with the makeup, you know, commercial style editorial sometimes gets there. Um, these shots are made using a beauty dish. In most cases, um, the beauty dish is directly in front of where the nasal area is. So if you look in here, you'll see her nose is pointing right at us, right? So the beauty dish is going to be just above her head, all right? Just to show you, uh, it's just above her head, all right? Probably about uh, a foot. One thing, uh, Sandro, if you are here, this is the lighting you asked me about. This is clamshell lighting. Yes. With the reflector, reflector actually, if I pull it away, I'll show you. When we whoop, got it back out, when we pull this away, you'll see the shadows under her neck get really dark on the right side. So when the clamshell comes in, that's when the reflector comes in, you'll see that fill in. Okay. 
that brings that makes the shadows a little less and it allows more focus to even out okay now the best part about this lighting is, is the reason why it's called butterfly is because if you look right here on the shadow the shadow will create this butterfly effect can i bring my picture again yep go for it just give me one second i'm zooming in so we can see it uh okay this is a close of my beard so please ignore it <laughs> so you can see that we have a butterfly shape under there my you nose go. over my mustache so you can see exactly the 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 shape of the butterfly and that's why it's called butterfly and can you tell uh can you talk a bit about what, why it's called to paramount why it's called paramount lighting yeah yeah well it's from back in the old black and white days um they used to use this for beauty lighting and uh I don't know, you know more about it? Yeah, no, it's just about that. Uh, it's because as I don't know the name of the studio, I know it's Paramount, but I don't know the last, the, the rest of the name. So it was used, used it to... Well, the name was with, Paramount Pictures. Paramount Pictures? Okay, so yeah. I was right. Yep. It was used with so many female stars. Uh, they say that there is even one of the, mm. the actresses that only mm -hmm. wanted to be photographed photographed with this light so it got the name and it's named butterfly chew and when you put mm -hmm. the reflector under or another soft box or use two screens uh it's gonna uh you're, you're gonna do the same uh few tricks with this uh i usually uh put a modeling lamp in the beauty dish and when i'm positioning the the reflector under it I pass my hand, I wave my hand over it to see where the light is going, mm -hmm. if it's really reflecting the right side. Uh, uh, oh, see, I love this. I love this. <laughs> uh, what I do is I actually get behind the model and look over the shoulder. And if I could see the light inside of that reflector, you know the reflector's coming up. That's a good technique, too. Uh, one thing that we didn't mention, we were kind of fast. Uh, uh, talking about it because again it's our first show but uh, most of those uh, uh, light patterns you can use with natural light you can use yep. with LED panels you can use with uh, strobes it doesn't matter what matters is the pattern is how you position your subject in your camera uh, uh, and the light it can be the sun can be a LED panel it doesn't matter that's correct uh, and with this light this is what I use, geez, uh, almost almost 80% of the time that I'm shooting, even outside. Um, this lighting just flatters everything about the person. Um, outside, of course, it would be more light. I wouldn't need the reflector. And this would actually light up her a lot easier because outside would be brighter, of course. Um, yeah, but then you are mixing lights, so you are you are not just erasing every light in the room. So you use a bit of the sun to fill the shadows. Right, and it's not flat lighting. Uh, I want to make sure everybody understands that's not what this is. This is not flat can you show, lighting. Can you can you can you move the beauty dish and show us flat light? So flat lighting, yeah. so everybody knows it. So we can see the difference. With flat lighting, let me just go in here and change this modifier. Uh, let's see. We'll go over. It's an Octa. amazing software, isn't it? So with the Octa, we can drop this down just slightly, bring it across. Do, 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 do. All right, and then let's see. We'll take another. While you set up, I'll try to explain the difference in between yeah. butterfly and flat light is uh, the position of the the light. When you are doing a butterfly, you are coming from over the subject in a 45 degree down trying to control the that shape of a butterfly under the nose so it doesn't get more than half of this part of the face so it, it, it cannot it cannot touch the lip the shadow cannot touch the lip when you are talking about flat light 
you are just uh, putting the same light both sides or just putting a light right in front of the subject and throwing all the shadow back so there are no shadows there are no shadows under the the chin uh, there are no shadows under the nose uh, and that's the big difference yes uh, with flat lighting it's not a fact of shadowing at all and it's going to take me a second to get this right. Uh, so there's that. And then go ahead and keep talking because yeah, <laughs> it's going to take me a second to set all this up. So what he's doing right now, he's putting one light uh, each side of the subject right in front of the face and setting both lights to the same power. So if you're using a flash meter, uh, you measure the same aperture both sides of the face. There will be no difference in between the lit side and the supposedly shadowy side. There, there will not be a shadow side. All the shadow, as you can see in the set, is going behind the model, right in the wall back there. Yep. And you, you get no... Uh, depth in the shot you get no the the uh, it looks like a uh, you don't get any 3d uh, uh, aspect in the shot it's just a flat image right so now we are there so now if I was to zoom out here let me back this up you can set. clearly see the shadows in behind in the wall back there. Oh yeah. Normally this is done a little. Come on, move. Move. There we go. Get out of the way. All right. So now let's back her up. And is you talking about the clamshell lighting? If you go to my Instagram page, uh, let me put my lower third here. If you go to my Instagram page, you're gonna see that uh, at least 90% of the pictures there use some kind of clamshell lighting. I always put some lighting coming from down to fill in the shadows that I create with the, the light right in front of the subject uh, 45 degrees down, pointing down 45 degrees. And I have a friend here that even for, even for, uh, a lot of people use it, for corporate headshots, it's always clamshell, it's always clamshell, it's always clamshell. Oh, yeah. Clamshell is the number one headshot setup at any time. And does an amazing job. And uh, the catch light, again, the, re the, the specular highlights in the eye, Look amazing because you have one over the uh, uh, the top part of the the iris and another one in the bottom part. Looks really cool. So that's basically how I would set it up myself in a studio. And the reason why is because you could see here from the photographer's side, you could see how both of these are evenly spaced on both sides. So what you're doing is you're making the shadows go right. And then this one takes the shadows out of the right side. And now you got an even lit all the way around face. Okay. The bottom takes the shadows out from underneath. So can you're you, having a flat lit can scene. Can you zoom in a bit? Yeah. I'm going to move her over. Oh, you can do that? Can yeah. Can you do that? I didn't know. You. That's so, you. So you can see... All her shadows would be missing. There's no loop lights. There's no any shadowing anywhere. And that's why it's called flat light. And no depth in the shot. Absolutely no depth. Which is why it's not very flattering if you try to use this with, uh, you know, seniors or anything like that. Eh, you're kind of pushing the line there. So... Uh, then so, trust me, if you want to sell something, you ain't going to sell those. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so as we 
went a bit fast. So let's come back a bit and let's talk about your setup with two lights and about filling uh, uh, the shadows because it's something that we didn't explore a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so let I will come back to my picture. Let me choose one here. Which one are we going to? Ugly dude. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm not beautiful. I'm not, I'm not a handsome man. So let's come back to the Rembrandt one. The Rembrandt? Let's, yeah, the Rembrandt. I will add my picture to the live. So this was not made to be a commercial picture. This was made to be education, educational. So what happened? I use one light and the shadows in the right side of the shot, the left side of my face, got right. really dark. There is almost no separation between me. I was using a, a light t-shirt against a dark, a darker background, but there is almost no separation between me and the backdrop. <laughs> so the things we could do to fix this, one of them is what you said that is putting a ring light. You have the ring light there? Yeah, it's the standard reflector. But yeah, go I ahead. Will, I will put on the, <coughs> the I'll put the diagram here. Oh, you're still not there. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. You are in the the Remember? Yep. Can you zoom zoom in a bit? Ooh. So Back there in the left side of the frame, you can see the standard reflector in, uh, uh, in the flash. Uh, this you first, uh, it depends on how you set it, but you created that light. Oh, you can see it right now. Now you can see it. Yep. Uh, in the shoulder, you can see the shadow and then a, a line of light there that is doing the separation. There is a lot of ways of doing that. And the other thing, can you put uh, something to kind of fill in a bit the shadows? The reflector? Yeah. Uh, you could use or, uh, uh, or bounce the light back or another softbox, what is easier for you. Yeah. Let me tell people on Instagram, we are live on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> we are live on YouTube. The link is on my, uh, it's the second link on my bio. You just need to click there and you'll be taken to the live and you can ask questions there. And we are showing the the pictures and lighting diagrams, and we are discussing the four main types of portrait lighting. Have people asking that they cannot see the picture we are talking about? <laughs> yeah, so we got a bunch. Just of join us. Just join us on YouTube. YouTube is where it's at. Yeah. All right. Hey, pull the wrong one. There she is. Uh, I'm just gonna grab another one. All right. So this is like having a piece of styrofoam. If it'll turn on me, too far away. There we go. So this is basically like having a styrofoam. Okay, the lines there is showing you where the reflection is actually going from each light. So in this case, we want it in front of her. So I'm pretty sure I'm not in front of her. Let me see. It's a bit nope. hard to control it. Yeah, a little bit when you got live going. So let's move. God dang it, give me that one piece. Oh. All right. There we go. Olá, Patricia. A gente tá live no YouTube. É o segundo link na minha bio. Se você quiser entrar lá para interagir com a gente, É só clicar no link e você vai ser levado direto para a live. Sorry. Someone from Portugal, from Portugal <laughs> on Instagram. So, now you can see, you can control your bounce to get it into the face. So, we're about right And there. that's how you take a, a more dramatic uh, lighting with dark shadows and bring the shadows up and turn it into a more commercial uh, picture. And make a, a, a light that will probably be more flattering for male and turning it into a bit more flattering for for woman and but still having some kind of drama correct so you can see now let's switch it oh bring yeah bring her to the middle you see how now you you brought the shadows out just about a stop and a half deeper 
So now you're almost at like a one to three. Almost. Yeah, and just look much less dramatic, much more commercial. It's a picture you can sell. It's not clean shell for women. Of course, clean shell would, it would be the best. But right. it still is much, is much more flattering than you be without exactly. the, the reflector there. Uh, the I, name, I, we got a question. What's the name of this software? Oh. Uh, so this software is actually called Set A Light. S E T dot A dot L I G H T. And I use it for every setup. If I'm designing something or have ideas, I need the team to be on board. We all use this software to get everything set up right. So we all know what we're doing. No, it's, a, it's an amazing software. It's kind of a bit expensive, especially for people who are outside the US. Yeah. Uh, but it's an amazing software because you can see uh, uh, exactly the results before taking the picture before going to the the studio and there is another thing i don't know if you check it but there is a uh, community page where you can you can yeah. download uh, uh setups from other photographers and man there are so many good stuff there i'll show you we're not getting paid by these guys by the way so this is straight yeah. up just showing you what it is all right set a light here these are other people who have put some ideas out there so this software does do a lot of different things so if you're looking at it you can see different ideas and what's cool is is any of these that you see on here because we all donate and you know we provide some of the stuff that we've had ideas on you know you can click on it and you can actually get the entire set for free so and then it you comes can then just move things the way you prefer right you don't need to be stuck with uh, uh, what other people did hey look that's your setup ain't it is it i cannot see it from here it's kind of far i'm getting old <laughs> it's with the oh, let me put full screen here it's with the octa box straight above them <laughs> yep yeah exactly the only thing i do i, I like the light a, a bit more feathered so i put right. above but a bit in front of the subject yep but it's the same thing it's almost my setup yeah so that's one of the cool things about this software um and i mean i think that's pretty much a wrap for our first show what's everybody yeah. think i mean are we all right <laughs> yeah tell us did you like it i mean we're we're gonna do more this is our first one trust me i think both of us were more nervous than anything to get on this show so, <laughs> uh we were sweating you can't tell uh, let me bring us back here and take the screen out wait okay hey there we go and so now we are back and we are close to the screen so now everybody knows the four basic lighting setups and you can do a lot with those as everything in photography, there are no rules. We call it rules, but there are no rules. Right. Uh, this is a start for you to develop your personal taste for lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's something that I started with one light and one light only. Today, uh, this setup that you just showed that similar to mine, uh, uh, most of my pictures have four lights on it and it, it became kind of my signature to have a ring light that shine is in, in the side of the subject and everything. So is a start for you to develop the taste for your personal setup. Let me see if I forgot to put something on the screen. Talk a bit, Ron. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody has a fingerprint. So if you look at anybody's images, everybody has this little je ne sais quoi, I guess. Of, of what they ha what they do and you try to mimic it but sometimes it's just a little thing that they do that nobody else does and that's that's who they are and it's also some people like darker images some people like lighter images you know each person's different and that's what their fingerprint is it's it's, it's a unique style that they have it's sometimes it's something so subtle yeah that it's tiny you see there and at the mm -hmm. same time, if you look fast, you don't see it. So right. that's it. That's all for our first show. Yep. How do you feel about it? Oh, my God. 
I'm glad it's over. Great. <laughs> great. No, I feel good. I feel good. I'm glad everybody joined us. Um, ask questions. It was great. Um, if anybody has any wants or needs or has anything that they want to see us put forth to give you ideas or to educate you in something, just hashtag it to us in the comments. That way we have no problems helping out at all, whether it's yep. business, whether it's images, whatever. But stay tuned because we really are going to have a lot of interviews coming every Thursday. I think three weeks now we have full. Two weeks full already. We decided. Let's, let's Two, almost just three. give a bit. Let, let's just give a bit of the story to the people. We decided to do this live last Tuesday. Last Tuesday. At night. At Literally. Night. It was eight o'clock at night. Both of our wives were telling us you need to go to bed. And we were sitting there <laughs> looking at each other going, we should just do this, right? So what do y'all think? Do y'all think this is good information for you? Let us know, please. And tell us we in the it. comment what you want to see in the next live. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, what topic? So we decided last Tuesday, and we already have three weeks booked. Three weeks booked for interviews. We already have yeah. three people that want to join us uh, uh, to share a bit of the knowledge of photography and the, the and their, their experience, the secrets of the industry. That's it's what we not really. To tell. I wouldn't say it's secrets. I mean, it, it, everyone's done everything already. Okay, there's nothing new being done. Um, what it is, it's just things that have been learned. It's little quirks and tips and tricks that they've figured out on their own because most photographers, I mean, the ones I know, have done it by themselves, right? Yep. So, you know, everyone's learning. I mean, I'm still learning, and I've been shooting since 1997. Still learning. So, you know... Anyone that tells you that you know everything, they don't know everything. And, yeah, and it's, it's the same. Everyone who criticizes your picture saying that this is bad, this is this, tell them to remember them when they start because right. everybody had out of focus shots. Everybody shots. started that. Everybody. So, again, we're happy you're here. We're happy you joined us. And if you're watching this in the replay, we're happy you're here. And we look forward to another great show. Yeah, and subscribe to not lose to, to not miss our next show, because you'll be really cool with Vinny. Vinny is a oh, great awesome. photographer, a great Funny photographer. Guy. Guy's he hilarious. Has a lot, a lot to teach us. Yes, he's amazing. But yeah, click on that little bell if you want to get a little notification. I think it's. Is it like yeah, right here? Uh, uh, it's down here. So, uh, <laughs> it's uh, somewhere. Not... <laughs> so now I, I guess... know how the other YouTubes feel about it. It's <laughs> I guess here, it... it's there. I don't know where is it, but it's, I, guess... I think it's down there. Yeah, it's like right here. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I always wanted to do that. I did it. All right. So again, my name is Romeo Vertach Giovanni. My name is Alexandre Leiton. And we have really enjoyed it today spending the time with you and we hope you've learned something or not but anyway that's us and if you have any doubts just hit us in any of our social media they are linked down in the description and we also have a facebook page so if you wanted to go onto our facebook page and ask questions or whatever that's fine we're there we're there to answer all right see you next week guys bye bye adios Thank <laughs> you.